Today's guest is Coblin, an artist who speaks his truth. Coblin is making a name for himself and his local scene. Welcome, Coblin. Thank you. Um, nice, nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, nice to have you here. So let's take you back to the beginning. Where were you born and raised, and how did music first come into your life? Born and raised, Sandy, Utah. Um, it's like probably 20, 25 minutes out of Salt Lake, which is, you know, main city of Utah. And, and I started with mom making me play piano, I don't know, like seven years old, eight years old, and then nine years old, 10 years old. And then it changed to uh, seventh grade, whatever age you are. In seventh grade, I took a percussion class. That's where like drums started. So it was a little more than piano, it was more percussion and stuff. I learned how to play like xylophones and stuff. Nice. And then nice. Uh, tried, tried guitar for a little bit, couldn't do it as well. I really like drums more. I like the beats more than like the strings. And then um, I actually stopped music for a bit because I just thought it was something my mom was trying to do. So I stopped doing piano for a little bit and I went to like skateboarding and stuff. But that, that kind of helped a lot because that put me into a culture of skateboarding. And then I was hanging out with different people at the skate park and with my friends, different friends. And then uh, I would say in about senior year so 18 years old i started making beats and then uh it was all just a friend thing you know soundcloud was kind of cool to put stuff on soundcloud that stuff was just for fun though but then i remember in high school me and my friends just made some song with all of us like six of us in it and uh it like spread around the school in like a day i remember it got a thousand plays in a day and we were flipping out about a thousand crazy, plays in crazy. a day and so that was that was that feeling of like a song going around kind of started it all we wanted to keep doing it so we kept doing it and then one of those friends that I made a song with kept making beats and stuff. And so he would send me beats for no cost. And then I would start rapping and I just kept posting on the cloud and then went to Spotify, started doing shows. And I guess that's just what I've been doing for the last year and a half, two years. Man, that's awesome. Do you still play piano and drums today or you kind of just moved on to the whole digital production part? Yeah, I definitely play drums still. I actually forgot to say I was like in a band in high school. We won battle the bands and everything. So like drums, is, I would say when people ask, I say drums is my main instrument. But uh, piano, I wouldn't say I play piano. Like, I can't, like, read music or nothing. That kind of fell off after I stopped for a few years. But I have, like, a little MIDI keyboard and stuff that I'll, like, make beats on and stuff. But I wouldn't say I play piano. I just have a basic knowledge of what notes, what. But drums, yeah, I play drums. Nice, man. What kind of music did you listen to growing up? Well, middle school, I'm, I was just thinking about this yesterday. Middle school, everyone listened. I don't even know what everyone listened to, but I'm, I have an older brother. He's six years older than me, so he had an influence of, like, uh, I would call it screamo music, right? Like my first show was 12 years old. I remember it was the band Escape the Fate. Like I remember getting punched in the face, the mosh pit thing was the coolest thing ever. I really liked screaming music and like um, my brother was in a band as well. So I was more into band music more than rap music. And I would say the rap music didn't come until like I said, when I was skateboarding, I was starting to hang out with other, with other people. And my brother kind of moved out of the house. But like, yeah, when I first started, had my own iPod Nano. It was all uh, screamo music, harder music. And not no no really rap at all, you know, for the first like five years of having an iPod or something. Wow. Was that the kind of music you drum to? Is the screamo hardcore stuff? Yeah, I would say so, but except the people I'll play drums with are more into like a little grungier, older music, kind of like Nirvana or we like with Battle of the Bands, we did Nirvana and Metallica. Nice. So like it's still hard, but it wasn't exactly like the screamo double bass type of music. It was just like the older grunge type of music so i would like i would like to have a band like that yeah but i don't really play that because i don't know anyone that plays guitar like that you know yeah i gotcha that's cool though yeah. man when did you decide to be an artist like you decided you want to write your own stuff and be a part of that when i was 18 it was around that same time with the song spreading throughout the school i had some people being pretty nice to me about it they're like man your your verse was cool your verse was better than the other or you know whatever and i was like okay and so the one friend his name is slam he would make some beats and then we would just go to his room he had a little mic like this probably quite not as nice but we just kind of do it make it it was super fun i liked having like my own voice on my iPod, on my uh on my phone to listen to and i could send it to people and they would like it i remember i like hid it from my parents for a while because i didn't want them to know i was a rapper and stuff but there was eventually a show that i did like with some friends we got invited to do a show and that was probably where it actually happened because at, at the show a bunch of high school people that i knew were in front of me but like they were like looking up at the stage and i was like doing a show to them so i was like this is this is something else i'm trying to do this and so then i just kept looking for shows and now the shows are looking for me that's legit <laughs> yeah that's, that's how it started though i think that's awesome 
So in the beginning, um, how was your recording process like? Did you record yourself? Did you go to a studio? Did you work with anyone? Yeah, we would do some bedroom recording. We would do some bedroom recording. We didn't know Jack, right? Like we were just, <laughs> didn't know about like compressors or reverb. We just seriously turned the mic on, put it in. Sometimes you listen to it back in the car and like you can't even hear your voice. Nothing about mastering, but eventually I bought my own laptop because I became determined to kind of just be able to do it myself because I learned what the price was for studios and I thought that was going to hold me back from making stuff and I wanted to start making beats. So I downloaded FL Studio and then, um, I got FL Studio to just record myself with no extra effects. And then I was going to send it to a engineering friend and he can do his magic on it. But uh, after like a year and a half, I started to decide I liked how I was mixing them. So I actually usually mix myself, my stuff myself. Um, I'll go to studios, you know, I'll pay a good amount of money to go to studios with like other people. Like there's a friend I have named Benjamin Major from Salt Lake and we'll go into studios and we'll really like be there for like three hours and we'll let the engineer do some really good stuff. And it's definitely better than what I can do, but I'm pretty determined on like um, thinking my sound comes from what I can do with my mixing and mastering. So I've been trying to learn it for like two years. And that's still kind of what I'm doing. But like I said, I just go to studios with collabs because I understand other people want that really professional sound. Yeah. That's awesome. Are you, did you say you're involved in the beat making process at all? Or is it more of just recording your voice and getting that part set up? definitely way more involved in the voice because I really like writing and in high school and stuff I took like writing classes like I really like poetry and I like reading books so I'm really into like words and stuff but I, I, I make beats yeah I'm not as good as some other people because I focus more on the, the voice part of it but I can make a beat or two and sometimes I'll sell them make a little bit of money off them or just help other people get some like fresher sounds because I don't really make the typical YouTube beat if you know what I'm saying but like yeah I, I make beats I got That's into awesome. it about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Yeah. That's awesome. So how would you say um, it's been trying to improve your production? Has it been a challenge for you, a hard thing, or has it kind of just come easy to you like a natural ear for it? It's, it's, it's like different every day, I guess. Like there has to be a mood for me to make uh, beats, but like with my drum experience, it's been easy. And like a little bit of piano knowledge has been easy. But then other days, like I'm trying to copy some sound that I heard. I'm like, I want to make a beat like this. So I try to make a beat. And it just don't come out right. And I get all frustrated and then I just like quit it for the day. And that, that, I hate that. But like sometimes I'll make something just super dope. And it's usually when I don't even think about it, I'll just make something, put a nice sample in it and keep it real simple, which is drums. And uh, it turns out fine. I can sell it or I can just use it for myself. Sometimes I'll just make like a lo fi beat that's not even made to have lyrics on it. Like I just make a beat. It's a nice little instrumental jam, probably like two minutes long. You can just run it back in your car or something. Those are my favorite ones to make too. Cause then I'm not trying to overthink it. Like, oh, would vocal sound good on this? Or like, would someone else sound good on this? Is this worth money? If I just make like a little lo-fi beat to just listen to about a minute and a half to two minutes of it, that's an easy one. That's the one that makes me make my best. That's it. So you mentioned you worked with a guy named Benjamin Major. Is that correct? When did you guys yeah. meet? And like, do you have a full team you work with now? Or kind of what is that dynamic? Me and Ben, me and, let's see, when did we meet? Uh, we met at, we probably just met at a show. And then he liked my style. I liked his style. Um, we both are similar. We both got like tattoos on our arms and we just kind of keep it light. I don't know. We don't, we kind of talk about similar things in our rap. But yeah, we met at a show. He liked it. And then we made, he came over to my apartment like a year and a half ago. And I had like the like cheapest mic, but he was so clean and care. He's, he's a few years ahead of me. He's like, um, I'm 21, he's 24. So like he's a few years ahead of me. And I thought it was super cool of him to come over, but he did it. Came over, made some song. He let me master it. It was totally trash. Like, I listen to it sometimes. I'm like, wow. But uh, that's how it started. We made this one song. He liked it, and we went together pretty well. It was on my beat, too. So he was like, okay, this dude's got something started. But he didn't necessarily, like, be my teammate until about a year later. Um, we made another song, same situation. He, like, came over. We just kind of got it going. And then we went to a studio. Like I said, me, me and Ben like to go to a studio sometimes. So we put some money down, went and did a recorded song. It was super sick. And we wanted to do a video, did the video. And then he goes, dog, we should just do an album. <laughs> I was like, all right. So that's actually what's in the mix, like right now. So like we just started working probably six months ago, like seriously. And now I probably consider Ben like my uh, closest teammate in Salt Lake. And I, I'm producing the whole album. And so we have this whole project. So he comes over every Tuesday. Like we have a weekly thing. He texts me every Tuesday and he'll come over. And uh, I'll, if I have a beat or something, we'll cook it up. I have like a beat sound that I specifically made for me and Ben 
as opposed to like other stuff that I could sell someone else or for myself. I'll make these for me and Ben and I consider us like a duo. And we're thinking about starting a duo as a side project and do a whole album, like not under Ben and Cobblin, but as like a group called Block Party. So we'll see how it goes. That'd be sick. Yeah. So you mentioned that you um you paid that you forked out the money to go to a studio and it came out, you know, you like the results. Was it worth it for you to go to the studio and pay out the you know professional money to get that? Or do you kind of still prefer to go back to your own thing and just do it yourself? That's a really good question because by myself sometimes like if i was to make my own music like if i'm in the studio and i'll hear I'll, he kind of like will mix it in front of you <clears throat> like you can hear what he's doing and i want to like speak out and be like do this or do this but then i kind of let him do it because we're paying him to do his thing and when it comes back it's super good like he's got he's got the science behind it you know he knows like the numbers he's looking for whereas i'm i didn't do schooling i've just been doing off straight experience so like I definitely have like my own sound that I like, but when it comes to like making a crisp song that you can put out and have it be like timeless, it's definitely better to go to a studio and put the money down. And even just the experience of going to a studio is always worth it. Like me, it's the way less stress than like trying to figure out how loud this verse should be and then the underlayer and then like the ad libs and how like the snare should sound, like all that stuff. Just leave it to him. You're paying the money. He does his thing. <clears throat> That's literally his job. That's what he wants to do. And then me and Ben just like, he's got couches, you know, you used to hang out in the studio. There's like a dog. Like it's, fun to go to the studio and let him do all the hard work and literally all you do is go in that booth and just like um spit it out like five six times get the best one and then you're done so it's it's worth it to do the money but i think um because i've been doing music my whole life i always have liked to write music as well so i think that's why i like to do it myself because i like to just take control of it when other people might not have that same feeling or it's like too stressful to look at the screen and see all those knobs they just pay someone else to do it so i get it but i like to do it myself better yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, another thing about a studio, I guess, is um, beyond the product you get, you also get to like work the professional and see how they do it. So I think it's good to even just go once, like talk with somebody, get their opinion, see what their workflow Absolutely. is, and then you know, kind of get that gauge. Mm -hmm. I agree. So what about live? Yeah, sorry, man. What about live music? Have you played live as your own solo project for a while, or how's that been? Yeah, yeah. So I would do it with friends for a little bit as it was starting out. It was just easier to get your name out there with friends and when everyone's helping promote the same thing obviously it just gets around easier but eventually uh i started doing it myself y'all you know, starting to get asked to do it myself or i knew people that i could ask to do a show myself and at first it was like a lot slower because there's not as much promotion about it and like everything's different but i love it man it's so fun to just be up there because then you don't have to share the stage i guess like i don't have to share the stage or share the set list i just before the show, I choose exactly what songs I want. And then I go on there and I just go crazy. Everyone's looking at me. You know, I like the attention. I like going up there and you just get to run it. Um, usually my, the DJ behind me that runs the track is like my friend. It's like, it's always fun to be up there with like one of my homies and we're just doing our thing. Get like 30 minutes to yourself where everyone's just kind of going crazy. It's so fun. I love performing. It's been a while though, because of all the yeah world yeah. issues, you know, but like, it's I think it's coming back soon. And there's a show in Salt Lake soon. I think it's happening. I'm like excited. I'm like, all right. Because I've been, me and Ben, like I said, me and Ben have just been going, going for the last six months. And then me, I've been going since it started still. So I'm ready to like, it's like a new era of stuff for performing. It's going to be crazy. That's awesome, man. Yeah. You have a favorite show you've played so far? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a really cool one. I, um, there was one that someone in Salt Lake put on. It had like a whole bunch of, it was like over 10 artists. Like it was more of like a, I don't want to say festival, but lack of a better word. Like it was just a bunch of artists that all had like 20 to you know, 20 minute sets. He, this guy ordered a food truck outside. So it, was, it made people kind of come. Um, the crowd was just nice and big. They were a good crowd. They were ready to jump around. They were ready to, yeah, wash a little bit. Some new faces I've never seen. Cause sometimes when you perform and you're just posting on your Instagram for it, you kind of just see your same faces or it's your homies that are coming to support you again, which is cool and everything. I love them, but you want to see some new faces sometimes. So this show was sick because of like 12 artists on the show. I saw like a whole bunch of new faces that had never heard of me. And I remember like I got a bunch of followers on SoundCloud after that night and everything. But I remember that show being super dope because the DJ booth was all big. There was lights, food truck. It was like a place with a bunch of graffiti on the walls. It like fit my vibe perfectly. I love that show. And I met a lot of like, uh, artists that i work with now too like some producers and stuff at that show yeah, that was a good show so that one it's, it was at a place called the loading dock in utah oh yeah and uh yeah it was just like a it's just like this little side place with a bunch of graffiti that was my favorite show probably only like 400 500 people there but that was i mean that's pretty big for a local show but yeah, yeah. It was sick. it's awesome man so what would you say drives you to do music 
I don't know. Honestly, sometimes I'd be at my uh, nine to five, dude, and I'm like, I cannot do this all day. Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> it makes me want to go back home, crack open the laptop, and just do some. Like, I, you know, i am be down. I've been lately talking to someone about starting, like, a band so I can play drums again. Because I don't have drums here at my apartment. Obviously, you can't really have drums in an apartment building. But, like, I just don't want to do something nine to five every day, work for someone else. I really want to have something creative going on for the rest of my life. I mean, I draw a little bit, too. So sometimes I'll just take a break and let the music chill because I can definitely stress myself out with that stuff, you know. And then I'll just I have like an iPad. I'll draw on that a little bit. But then it's all kind of surrounded around like hip hop. Um, I like house music as well, Daft Punk, all that stuff. Like, I love listening to that stuff and just kind of staying inspired with the new stuff. But awesome. I think it's stressful sometimes to try to, like, be famous, I guess, you know, get a crowd listening. And, like, they kind of lose interest after a while. You don't know what's going on. But I think I just really want to create for a living as opposed to working for a living. So. Yeah, I makes know. sense. I mean, that's that's a dream right there. So what yeah. would you say are your short-term and long-term goals for music? Short-term short term i don't know long term i want to be able to sell a beat for like at least a thousand like i want to make a beat that's worth and then when you buy it you use it and it like helps you out like you have a cobble and beat to me that that'd be huge you know because that's like that means i found a sound short term i you know what short term music would actually be to create a side project like i was saying because i've just been doing um beats and i've just been doing <laughs> <laughs> I've just been doing uh, beats and rapping for like two years. It's it's not old, you know, but like it's it's been feeling like a cycle and I'm getting stuck or something. So I would say my short term reel sometime this year, either like a like this duo project with Ben would be cool, even though it's still rap, or I have a friend that plays bass. We're thinking about starting just like a little band type of thing. I got some guitar player friends. So I would say my short term would be to start a side project so I don't get bored, I guess. Don't get stuck in the cycle. And then long term, yeah, be able to sell like a beat or some type of production for like over a thousand dollars so I can almost live off it you know because i'll be eating a thousand i could do that once a day or something so nice man it'll be sick yeah how do you feel about the Salt Lake utah music scene dude it's it's so cool i don't know what other people's cities are like i don't know if it's just because i'm in it and like i actually know what's going on i don't know what but i feel like Salt Lake's. there's so many there's like there's like um a little more conscious rappers there's people that you know use terms like third eye or just like talk about things that are a little deeper and then there's people that like some trap music and they just it's really just made for some parties but it's like everything i love everything the producers there's so many producers here there's hip-hop producers trap producers there's uh lo-fi producers there's bands we got bands we have singers we have female singers like it's sick dude and there's like clothing brands too so there's a whole scene here in utah a bunch of t-shirts there's like pants and shoes and People have even like blown up out of Utah a little bit recently. It's it's sick. I love the scene here, and that probably keeps me going too because I'm not the only one. I'm not just trying to make like some music put on SoundCloud for like God knows who. Like it's like a whole. I'll post a song, and there's other artists that like help me out on Instagram or something. They put on the stories. I do the same thing. Like we keep this scene alive. I was all like working together, and we're all trying to do the same thing. And that's why the shows are fun too. Because when you see them, it's like you see no friend. I don't really see otherwise. Like, oh what's up man like you ready to do the show and then we just do our thing and we go by our stage names I don't, I don't know like anyone's first i know ben's real name but like i don't know anyone's first name in in the scene it's like this little show yeah it's yeah. really cool the scene awesome sounds like there's a ton of support between people or the, between the artists mm -hmm. that's really helpful mm -hmm. yeah man so um what advice would you give to a new artist who's just starting out and trying to find their feet i would say if you have shows, like not like do shows, but like if there's shows in the local scene, just go see them. Like go see what's going on because that's probably helping the most is having those connections that I was just talking about. Like people helping you out or like you can hear what your city is sounding like and you can almost find your place. But that kind of is a hard thing to say too because it's hard to find your place. But I would say just don't try to copy anyone. I think the whole reason that I've even gotten anywhere is because of that whole, like I didn't, you know, I just, got a laptop tried my hardest to make beats it was so tough at first like they were so trash but i was like no nah, like this is gonna work and then eventually i am making a little bit of money off of it and i got people that listen to me i got people that i know like I've, i'm definitely not where i started i guess and i think it's because you come to me to find my music there's no one else that's really doing it and that's just because i took the reins on it got the laptop decided even if my beats are trash for two years like i i have producer friends and i'm putting music out on their beats 
but the whole time I've been making beats on my own, like in the dark, like I, I didn't put them out for a while because they're not good. So like I've been working on them and now they're finally like probably this year, 2021, they're finally like, I'm confident enough in them to just put them out, send them to people, I don't care. So I'll say my advice would be to just take your own path. Don't be trying to copy anyone. I don't even mean like famous people too, like maybe get inspired, but don't just be trying to copy their words, like really figure out where you live at and what your life is looking like on a day to day and try to put it in the right words. That's an interesting way. Love it. Yeah. That's super important. Just be genuine. 